Okay, here we go. All right, so finishing up with our notes on hyperbolas, today what we're going to focus on is writing equations mm -hmm. of hyperbolas. Um, given a graph is what we'll start out with, and then we'll move to given certain information and characteristics about it, and we'll write the equation for those, just like we did for ellipse. Okay, so at the top of our notes, could you write these equations without peaking? If it's horizontal, which one comes first, x or y? X's. So it's x minus h squared over a squared or b squared? a squared minus then the y's over b squared equals 1. Okay, so it's going to be very similar for the vertical except the y minus k comes first. It's still over a squared minus then the h's over b squared equals 1. Good. Okay. h, k is the what? Center. Center. It's been the same with circles, ellipse, and hyperbolas. Um, a is the distance from the blank to the blank. Center to the vertex. Yes, or vertices, plural. From the center to the vertices. B is the distance from the blank to the blank. You got it. Center to co-vertices. Okay, just to review one more difference here. Um, the conjugate axis connects the co-vertices. The transverse axis connects the vertices. So the transverse axis is 2A and the conjugate axis is 2B. We'll use that for one, at least one problem today. Okay, so really these three things are what we need to know to write the equation of a, of a hyperbola. I need to know the h and k, so I need to know the center point, and I need to know a and I know b. And if I know those four variables, then I can write the equation of the hyperbola. Okay, so that's what we're going to deal with. All right, so looking at this very first one, what is the center? It's right there in the middle of the rectangle, right? What is that ordered pair? 4, 2. All right, do I know A? Which distance is A? A goes from the center to a vertex. Remember, the vertices are the points that you actually draw the curve through. So what is A? Just 1, isn't it? Therefore, A squared is what? Also 1. And then B is the distance from center to covertex. So that's 1, 2, 3 is the B value, which means B squared is 9. Well, if I know the center, A and B, then I can write the equation. Okay, this is horizontal or vertical? Horizontal, because curves are opening left and right. So I'm using this formula right here, plugging in H, K, A, and B, and I will have my equation. So it'll be X minus 4 squared over A squared, which is 1, so you wouldn't have to use a fraction for that one, minus y minus 2 squared over our b squared equals 1. Pretty easy. Okay. All right, let's jump down and do number 3. So is this one horizontal or vertical? 
vertical. So when I do go to write the equation, I'll have to be sure and use this form and put the y's first. You're just looking at which way the curves open. So the curves open up and down. Y-axis goes up and down vertical, so it's vertical. All right, let's find our center point so we can just sort of eyeball where that middle is there. And then let's see what that ordered pair is. Uh, one, two, three, three, negative three. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. And what's A? Four, because I'm going from center to vertex. So A is four. Of course, that makes A squared 16. And then B is the distance from center out to the other edge of the rectangle where the vertex is not located. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like B is seven, which means B squared is 49. I've got the center, A, B. We're using the vertical formula. So that is Y plus 3 squared over a squared. Remember, a squared is always on the positive denominator. Minus y, oops, sorry, x minus 3 squared over b squared equals 1. Question? easier than what we did yesterday, don't you think? Okay, let's do four and then we'll go on to different situations. Okay, vertical or horizontal? Vertical. You want to try this one on your own? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. All right, that'll be easy to fix. So center is negative 6, negative 2, and that makes that x plus 6. Thank you. Anything else that you caught? Do we agree now? Okay. Nice. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Thumbs up when you're ready. Yep. All right, next page, we're going to look at 5, 6, and 10. Okay, who would like a piece of graph paper for these? Because this is where we just have information, and so we're going to have to figure out where center is and all that good stuff. Anybody over here? Wait, I 
Maddie, there should be one coming back. You all have some to pass back Okay. Everybody good now? If you want graph paper, you got it. All right. So, I had one more over here. All right. So, let's plot this information that we're given. The vertices are 9, negative 2, and negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so the things that we need to figure out is, is this horizontal or vertical? Because we don't have a graph to look at this time. Where's the center? What's A? What's B? Okay, so if that's all I know so far are these two vertices, I can actually get most of that information just from this. Is this horizontal or vertical? Hmm? Horizontal. Because I can't have, remember, vertical's going to look like this. And horizontal is going to look like this. Well, if the vertices are lined up horizontally, you're not going to end up with a graph that looks like this coming from those vertices. So the curves will be going out to the left and to the right. So it's definitely a horizontal graph. So when I set up that formula, I'll have to use the horizontal setup. Okay. All right, so in addition to knowing that it's horizontal, what else can I find from this infer from these two points? The center point. So we're going to, if you're on graph paper, you can walk it into the middle or use your midpoint formula. And with the midpoint formula, remember, we're just averaging x's. That means add them up and divide by 2. And averaging the y's, add them up and divide by 2. Okay, so that's 6 over 2 is 3, and negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. So what I know so far is H and K, and the fact that it's a horizontal hyperbola. So now I can find one more piece of information from just these two points. Remember just a minute ago we said that A was the distance from center to vertices. So I can just count my center point is here. And distance of A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So A is 6. Well, if A is 6, A squared is 36. Okay, now how do I find B? I don't have the covertices given, but I do have the conjugate axis. And that's what I was showing you a minute ago. The conjugate axis runs between covertices, and the length of the conjugate axis is 2b. So this 28 is 2b, which means that b is 14, which means that b squared is 196. Okay, so I know the center, I've got H and K, I know A squared, I know B squared, I know it's horizontal. And then we just plug it into that formula. So my X term is coming first, over A squared, 
minus, then the y term, over b squared, equals 1. Who has a question? Mm -hmm. Transverse, yes. So if you're adding that to your formula sheet, yeah, they're not on here. Um, conjugate is between covertices. So there's your conjugate. And then the other one is your transverse. Over here, this is conjugate. And then your transverse would be here. Ah, I'm running out of room. It's like that. So transverse is to a conjugate to a conjugate. You got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conjugate axis runs between covertices. So its length is b plus b or 2b. But the um, transverse axis runs between vertexes, vertices <laughs> would be plural. So it's a plus a or 2a length. So if you're given those, that's given to you so that you can find a or b. All right, any other questions on number five? I have a question. Yes. Um, so, will you pull the paper back up? The Formulas? This one? Yes. Okay. So, I don't know how I would like to kind of word it. So, okay. toe vertex uh -huh. for horizontal and the toe vertex for vertical are different, right? Yes. Right, so over here, conjugate axis is up and down, but over here, it's left and right. Because it's running between co-vertices, not the vertices. Okay, so what's, when, it runs, when it runs through the vertices, what's it called? That's the transverse axis. Okay, and those terms, if you forget them, are on the very first page of the notes for ellipse, for purple lips. Okay, who? Alex, question? Wait, so on vertical, the orange is the transverse. Uh -huh. Wait, no. It's, yeah, it's the right. orange on both. Uh huh. Okay, anything else before we go on to the next one? All right. Let's hit lots of parts, aren't there? This is the one with the most parts. Okay, let's go to number six next. Okay, so this one is giving us covertices and the length, length of the transverse axis. So this is exact opposite information of the one we just did. Okay, so let's graph this or at least do a little rough sketch just so you can get a visual of what's going on. Okay, my co-vertices are 3, negative 9, and negative 13, negative 9, transverse axis has length 26. Okay, so that's the given information. All right, 3, negative 9. All right, if those two points that I just plotted are co-vertices, do the curves go through these? No, 
If the curves went through them, it'd be horizontal. Therefore, this is vertical. So the curves, if we graphed it, would look like this. Okay, and that just tells us which formula or which setup to use for the equation. Okay, still we go back to it, and what other information can we get from this? The center. It's going to be the midpoint. So center is average the x's. Average the y's. That's how we find something in the middle. So that's negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. That's our center point. That gives me h and k. Are you good with that? Okay, I can get one more piece of information from this. Can I get A or B if it's co-vertices that I'm looking at? B. So distance from center, one, two, three, four, five. Here's my center point. This distance to the co-vertex will be B. If I was going to the vertex, it would be A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is the B value. So B squared is 64. Okay, I think I've squeezed all the information out of those two points. So then I go back and I see that the transverse axis length is 26. Okay, so the transverse runs between the two foci. Looking back on the front page of our notes, Transverse axis length is 2a. So I've been given that so that we can figure out a. So 2a is 26, a is 13, and a squared is 169. Okay, so I have the center, I have a squared, I have b squared. Let's put all of that together into a formula for a vertical hyperbola. If you're okay with this when you're done. Are we good? So next, we're going to jump down to number 10. So this one um, is giving us vertices and foci. So let's start by plotting the vertices. Okay, so once I plot the vertices, what three things can I find? 
A. Center point. Okay, we'll get to see you in a minute. Just from these two, I can tell where the center point is with the midpoint. I can find A, and what else does this tell me? If it's horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Okay, so which will this be? Horizontal, because the curves have to go through those vertices. I can't have them going through those vertices and then be lined up vertically, because the vertices here are lined up horizontally. So that tells me it's a horizontal, so I will use the horizontal uh, formula when I set it up. Okay, so center, if you are on graph paper, that's pretty easy to just spot there. I don't know that we really need the... From the foci, yes, good point. Yes, I'll come back to that in just one sec. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 8. Very good observation. Okay, so that's our center, whether you walked it into the middle or used your midpoint formula or used your foci. Like Anna Kate said, look at this funky little order pair for foci. Here's your H and here's your K, and then this is what? C plus or minus that C value there. So in a second, we'll know C. We're about to find A, and we'll have to use A and C to figure out B. Okay, nice job. Okay, so there's our center, our H and our K. Um, what is A? Three, just literally count over three spaces. So A is three which means a squared is 9. Okay, so like we said just a minute ago, this is our c value. Square root of 130. What is c squared then? Just 130. And I'm going to have to use c squared equals a squared plus b squared to figure out what b is. And I really don't need b, I need b squared. So c squared is 130, a squared was 9, plus b squared. Subtract 9, I get 121 equals b squared. Now just for the fun of it, b is 11, but we don't need that. So I have a squared, I have b squared, and I have my center point. So we'll use all three of those things and the fact that it, we know it's horizontal to write our equation. What do we think about that one? Okay. Because our K was a negative. Mm -hmm. You leave off your negative like I did a minute ago. So easy to do. You can say foci or foci or both. Like where it's at, like where they have the square root at, that's where you can help horizontal. Yes, because it was added to the x. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right, let's just do one more. I think we're, we're doing pretty well. Let's do 14. Uh, what? I don't like that. You don't? What do you have against asymptotes? They have done nothing to you. The fraction, the fraction. You know what? That's actually going to be a very easy thing. If you need another piece, I've got some up here. Wow. 
Get your act together back there, Lily. <laughs> Okay, let's plot these two points. One negative one and five negative one. Five negative one. Okay, those are not vertices, they are covertices. So is this vertical or horizontal? vertical because the curves are not going through these two points. That means they have to be doing this. Okay, so it is vertical because these are the covertices, not the vertices. So my curve is not cutting through these. It has to be like that. Okay, any other questions on this so far? Okay, we can find the center point, right? Figure out that point in the middle. Whatever method you're using. Should be getting three negative one. Okay, so what other piece of information can I get from this? the B because those are not vertices, they're covertices. So this distance here is B. B is 2. So B squared is 4. Okay, so I have my center point. I have B. Now look at this. Go to the other piece of information that was asymptote. Remember we said it was vertical. Well look at this. Okay, vertical. Asymptotes are right there. So guess what? That slope that we're looking at is A over B. So the slope is one half and negative one half. So what's A? One. What's B? Two. So we know because of this, one half being A over B, I already found out that B was two, so A is one. A squared is also 1. Okay, now there's one problem today that I'm going to give you in just a second where we find out that B is 2, but then the fraction isn't 1 over 2. It's like something that's been reduced. Okay, so what if I, totally different scenario. Let's say I found out that B was 8, but this slope is listed as 1 half then that means it was 4 over 8. Okay, So you just have to figure out what it was before it was reduced. Okay, So you'll have one of those. So actually having asymptotes makes it pretty easy because A and B are sitting right there, or a reduced version of A and B. Can you explain the fraction thing again? Uh-huh. Yes, and then I'll... Was that part of your question? No, I, no, I don't know. Okay. All right, so if the... Um, hyperbola is vertical, the asymptote is set up A over B for, as your slope, and then negative A over B. If it's horizontal, it's B over A. So it matters which one. You have to decide which one you're dealing with so that you know if the top is A or B. So I'm just seeing that the slope is 1, 2, and negative 1 over 2. So that means this was A on top and B on the bottom. I meant like whenever you get the 4 over 8. Oh, that. If I got that situation. Okay, so let's say that I had come over here and I said, oh, B is 8. But then I went back up here and I looked at the slope that was 1 half. Mm -hmm. Then I know that I was dealing with A over B and I got 1 half. That just means that it was reduced and it was something over 8. So if I knew that B was really 8 but the reduced fraction was 1 half, then that tells me that must have been a 4 originally. So you use the 4. Then I would use the 4. Exactly. What happens if you use the 1, though? Would it work? Would it still work? No, it'll give you a wrong A and B. Okay. Okay. So if A and B can be reduced, it will be reduced, and you just have to figure out what it was before it was reduced. Okay. I think it might be the last homework problem, so if you get to that one and have questions, let me know. 
Okay, so I think we have everything, don't we? We have the center, the A, and the B. And we knew it was vertical, so Y is coming first over A squared. X comes next over B squared equals 1. Yes? Okay, because remember when we draw the asymptotes, there's one going this direction with a positive slope and one going this direction with a negative slope. No, so, mm -mm. so to get both of them, we just say, okay, there's a slope of B over A or A over B, but one is positive, one is negative, just to get both slanted lines there. Any other questions? Okay, I will come around with your homework. You guys have a good bit of time to work on this, which makes me happy because I know there's a lot of people working on floats and things tonight. Um, we're an odd bunch, so we're going to do odds today. Yes, on my desk.